But now he's got a group of people that are both insidious and undermining. He's got a group of people that are vulgar and vicious. Uh, There's a spectrum that we identified last time, which is sometimes popular to describe those people in your life who are toxic. Now, what you got to be careful with as you do this is not just define anybody who ever does anything in your life that you don't like as toxic. And therefore, they are abusive, wicked people, and I should do everything in my power to get as far away from my can as anybody else who makes my life uncomfortable. That's not what this is. You understand that, right? This is a group of people who are eager to take advantage of the Apostle Paul and kill him. And Paul is saying, wisdom says, I don't let myself fall into your hands. We identified them last time just by way of review and see if this doesn't stick. People who work as hard and as fast as they can to gain and keep the upper hand against you, who are always putting you under their thumb, that you're the one who's always wrong, you're the one who's always in trouble. And they go to work not only on you, but they go to work on the relationships of the people in your life that are around you so that they, who could make life easier for you, now make life harder for you in deference to that person. They pretend to be on your side. They pretend to be favorable to those people. They start dropping lies about you. They block any way forward that you have. And they damage all of your other relationships in life so that you can do nothing but face them. Those are the people that we flee. That's what Paul found here in this chapter. We also said that there's people in your life who will put a kind of pressure on you to get you to do what you normally wouldn't do and put pressure on other people to do to you what they normally wouldn't do either if they were thinking clearly or just rationally, to make decisions and take actions that you'd never come up with or never even consider on your own, but under their coercion to get you to bump the line of morality, just make an exception just this one time. No, those are the people that manipulate us relationally and we flee from them. And then there's those people who raise the intensity of intimidation. Uh, They feel the need to bring a level of threat where you feel the pressure to back down. You just give in. You either cave under the pressure or get out of their way, but they're going to go after certain results that they want to have and you won't be able to stop them. You're outnumbered, you're outmatched, so you are distracted and paralyzed. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to respond. All you are is paralyzed under the intimidation. It's already a defeat because they're verbal and nonverbal. Their intimidation is a constant threat that you live, live under. These are people that we flee. 